Okay, so I just thought I would share some car storage tips for your classic. Uh, now, I'm not saying my way is the way by any means. Uh, you know, you do what you uh, prefer for sure. But this car has been sitting since 2010 in storage and uh, I've never had any trouble so uh, I'll just kind of let you know what I did to keep the car alive all this time it really doesn't take much um, so basically uh, keep the gas tank full always um, if you do that it can't sweat and the tank can't rust can't get any moisture in it uh, if you keep it plumb full, that's, and the same with small engines and stuff too. If you drain them out, the tank will just rust out. It's always good to keep them full. Uh, and then we'll go to, you know, and of course before you fire it up, it's always good to check oil. Make sure all that's good. You know, keep a battery tender on there. Uh... Or like in my case, I take the battery out and I just put it like in the basement on a battery tender. Because I, you know, and again, you do what you want. The more often you run them, the better. But for me, it's it's every three months um, I run my my car. And I've never had any trouble. It runs the same today as it did 12 years ago. I've never had a plugged up carburetor or any of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's just good to check everything, make sure your fluids all look good, and then uh, like in, in some cases, like mine, I do have rodent issues, unfortunately, so I do have to put you know, rodent repellent packets and stuff in here, and it's not the most pleasant smell obviously but um you know i'd rather have that than have rodents in the car so uh, but either way let me okay now carbureted cars are nice because and again this is just what i do you can do uh i would love to hear what you guys do uh that store your classics but what I've always done is on a carbureted car, I just I don't pump the gas or anything. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn over this engine for a good 10 to 12 seconds. And what that's going to do is it's going to prime up the oil pump and pressurize it and start moving oil through the oil galleries into the main and rod bearings, all that stuff before we actually fire up the car. And that'll save from what's called a dry start. I mean, dry starts are so damaging on any car, any engine, really. So I find that just cranking it over really uh, loosens things up, gets the oil going. So let's see what happens. We'll crank it for about 10 or 12 seconds. That might have been longer than that might have been 15 but you can go a good 15 seconds on a starter you're not going to hurt it you don't want to exceed that you don't want to overheat the starter but um, i usually do that a couple of times and in, in the summer i'll usually do that once and then start it up in the winter i usually do uh like it's december right now so i'll probably do that twice let the starter sit a second you know sit for a minute and then i'll uh I'll do that again. Okay, that's good. So yeah, give the starter another break. And you could actually hear the engine kind of loosening up as it was turning. It was starting to turn a little quicker. You know, starting to get out that oil pressure and starting to loosen up, get some oil splashed on them cylinder walls. That'll save so much wear and tear um, when you do finally start it. 
So now I'll go ahead and pump the gas a couple times. Now we'll be on the fast idle mode. Um, and I'll start it here in a sec. Now fuel injection, I do have a fuel injected car as well. And I've got a little switch under the dash here and I can turn the fuel pump off. And I can turn that off and then crank the engine over and then turn that fuel pump back on and then it'll, of course it'll start up. But yeah, let's see what happens. Again, this car, every th I only start it once every three months. Runs the same as it always did. And that's been 12 years of this now. Never a problem yet. She's running. So yeah, um, again, I'd love to hear any other tips. Again, I'm not saying my way is like the best way in the world, but I figure if it's worked for 12 years, um, and again, I wish I ran it every, every more often than every three months, but I just, I don't. It's only about every three months I start it up, so. But yeah, the car always, uh, always runs the same. You know, they say gas gets old and all that. And this one, I did start running it out. Um, the only, this is the only time I haven't had it plumb full because I've been trying to, you know, run out some of that old gas and. And I've never had problems with gas getting old either. I mean, some people claim it's like, oh, six month old gas, it's bad. I don't buy that because I've kept this car full and I've only ran the tank low one other time in 12 years. Other than that, I just have a five gallon can. I Again, I drive it every three months for about a half hour. Probably only burn maybe a gallon of gas each time if that and then I just top it off again the next time so you're constantly kind of recycling keeping fresh gas in that tank but gas will last a lot longer than you might think as long as you keep that tank full so uh, but again I, I would love to hear uh, any other input if there's anything else I should do or could do um, and I did forget to mention I do add a, it's like an ethanol protector treatment stuff into the gas and I've been doing that as well and that seems to, I don't know if it's made any difference because I used to not use it and I never had any trouble but I figure it's probably better safe than sorry. So anyway, um, my battery's low, I better go. Please, please uh, give me your input, I would love to hear what you do when you store your car away. It's always fun to learn. Thank you so much. I'd love new ideas. Appreciate it.